welcome to the Chrissy B Show. And it's absolutely packed today. I've got lots of guests and lots of interesting content for the show. First of all, we have Ian and Helen over here. Hi. Talk about. We're buzzing. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Good. Good. So we've got loads. Let's just tell you what's on the show yes, today. Please. Okay. So we do have our love experts talking on things we can think about to help develop our relationships in the new year. That's James and Helena Marquez. We also have Nina and Joe Littler and Randy Glenn from Thrive on Five. We'll be here to talk about their business, which aims to help people be that little bit more healthy. And we'll find out what we need for a full checkup with Dr. Rob Hicks. So lots of healthy stuff for us today. Absolutely. It's going to be really good. Yes. We're also going to be taking a look at my ab sailing challenge. And Hannah Richards will be showing us how to make blackberry protein balls. And we also have Jane Rafters to give us a very simple and effective tip on how to strengthen the thighs. And I'll also be answering a question from a viewer, actually, I'm going to get our love experts to help me answer this question because it is love related. But first of all, let's go straight to the news. Oh, that was okay. good. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Really good. Oh, we're slick. going to be able to get through it all today, Gosh. I'm uh, to say. Oh, hmm. happy birthday, Duchess of Cambridge. Oh, 30. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was not my birthday. <laughs> She's 33. Oh. Um, so happy birthday really? to her. Yeah, she's 33. Gosh. And um, Friends Reunited has done some research, and apparently 33, 7 out of 10 people say that 33 is their favourite year. That's when they're most happy. What time do you being 33? I don't think it applied to me, so I don't know what this research I, I, is. I think but my favourite year is 63. Guess how old I am now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like my 30s, I'm enjoying my 40s as well, actually. Yeah. 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 I think you. Do you know, as I keep You're on saying to everyone, you know, be, be, absolutely. Age, it's got nothing to do with yeah. it. It's how you feel, who you are, you know, exactly. and how you respond to people, you know, how you work yeah. with people. It's so, true, it's so. true. Definitely. I'm very happy. Good, we're very happy for you. So, oh, 33, there you are. <laughs> I feel like we should break into a song. Well, we'll get on to the news in a minute, don't we? We are the world. <laughs> <laughs> We all make hands together. We can do. We can do this. So we get we to the news then. <laughs> we go to the news. We go to this. Oh well, we, we call it news. Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> he oh. of the, she of the uncoupling. <laughs> now wishes What's she had, now? She, had, she, she now wishes she hadn't uncoupled. Oh really? <laughs> uh, I think I think she's. I, there is a chance that they may get back together, but I think everyone's having a go at her all the time. I think leave her alone. She's, um, you know, in th you know, she's doing her self therapy and everything. As long as mm. she's happy and he's happy, Chris Martin. Well, maybe she's had time to matters. work on herself, yeah. perhaps. I she's very, so. she's very into yeah. mindfulness, and I think mm -hmm. now is sort of knows herself well and realizes what went wrong. They were quite young when they married. Mm -hmm. um, so well, I think she's had a lot of worries they? as well because she she, had, yeah. she lost over a million pounds on her website, didn't she? As well, so she's had this. Um, all sorts of sort of con business concerns as well, so it's not mm. been a. I think she's quite. Twenty fourteen was yeah. Twenty fourteen wasn't such a good year for her, but twenty fifteen, as we all know, is going to be the year. The year okay. for everybody, <laughs> for everybody. Oh, so anyway, Prince Harry was quite interesting. Well, I don't know why I don't find darts that interesting. I don't darts. know about you, darts. No. But Prince Harry loves darts, apparently, at Ali Pali at the World Darts Championships, enjoying himself, having a beer. Um, which is very good. It's quite a working class sport. It's quite mm -hmm. known as that. So, so everyone's quite happy because obviously he's champion it and everything. Oh, okay. He's a way of integrating himself in. But he was, I think he was there in 2011 as well. So what do you think of darts? Is he any good? What, what, what do I think of darts? PR, you uh, think? PR, what, what, PR. What, 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 do I, what, what do I think of Harry going to darts? <laughs> I think it's a very good bit of royal branding. You know, really? get, get, them, get, you know get, get them with the working classes, you know, flat caps and pigeons. I... <laughs> 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 this is flying around your nose. Look, it's, it's, it's my aftershave tonight. This, this place is alive tonight. The, um, I, th I think the reality is, is that uh, um, I'm sure he has an interest in darts. Uh, it's a very popular uh, pastime nowadays as well. <laughs> Um, and good luck to him. He's there with his mates. <laughs> and that's well. all he's going to say. Let <laughs> yeah. him play darts if he wants to play darts. We don't need to analyse everything he does, you, surely. You don't. You're quite, yes. you're quite right. The world you're does, though, right. don't they? <laughs> um, Kirsty Alley. Do you know Kirsty yes, Alley? Who yes. used to be in Cheers. Mm -hmm. Um, lost an enormous amount of weight. It looks amazing. But she's lost 50, pa 50 pounds because she was quite but heavy. But she keeps yo-yoing, doesn't she? Does she? Yeah. Does she? Yeah. Does she? Yeah. she looks so, I mean, she looks amazingly good. And she's recently wearing a Victoria Beckham dress. So you can imagine she was 
so excited because yeah. I can't believe she's, they're that she's big. Really, well, from what I remember, I was seeing pictures of her in the papers. She like, does. Yeah. She's yeah. She's skinny, so she she's goes up and yeah, yeah, she does. She but down. she should stay. She, she she looks really healthy. It depends how she's she lost it because if she's done it in yeah, a silly probably. way and yeah. starved herself like a lot of she's celebs done it over do, the last year she'll put it on again and more. But if she's done it properly, then... Yeah, so, oh, she looks brilliant. And there's this new diet, isn't it, that's five days on, two days off, isn't it? Protein diet. Yeah. God, some of these diets. I just, uh, just so fed up of it all. Really, well, it's good just to got be to eat healthy. Yeah, just to eat healthy. Just, Absolutely. I yeah. just don't believe in diets at all. Fruit and veg. Just eat healthy, and that's it. And everything. And we're going to be yeah. talking more about that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. So the Beckhams have just come back from the Maldives. Well, they've spent New Year's Eve there. And mm. uh, funny to hear Victoria Beckham talk. She was answering questions for American Vogue, and one of the things she hates is being asked um, why she doesn't smile, why she's so sour faced. And her answer is that she's, she's always smiling inside, which is lovely, um, but she feels that she has a responsibility to the fashion industry. What is that supposed what? to mean? It sounds, sounds like that? one of my sound bites. <laughs> it's completely bad. So obviously you have to just the, the, scowl in the fashion smile, world. There, well, there sells is, things there is a reality yeah. to all this. Really, Ian? There is a reality to all this. I, I, you know, um, I, I uh, was part of the background of Spice Girls when they first started, and before they first started. Uh, and I saw a lot of the photographs of actually how they looked even before they were groomed. And there's a very good reason why Victoria Beckham doesn't smile. Oh, you're going to say she had bad teeth? <laughs> but, um, I think she looked good. Well, her no, teeth? In those days. Were terrible. But she's fixed them. She's fixed them. So? But, but, but there's this fixation. Oh, she's got a bit of a complex still. You know, she's still got a complex over it. She was one of the... She had to be posh, didn't she? It's all I can say on the subject. Oh, I don't believe you. Oh, you never do. Helen Turner. I think even if your teeth aren't straight, but a smile just brightens up. No, you don't have to open your mouth either. You can just smile, yeah. You know, I mean, she had an eyebrow issue at one time, and she had a tooth issue as well when she was younger. And, you know, she... Well, eyebrows are easily... They're easily fixed. No, no, but they, they, it was like... Uh... Oh, unibrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I had one of those. I think so. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I was going down the green I'll just say how now. nice your eyes look tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those good days. Anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what they're... Yeah, Moving on. Absolutely. Moving on. Um, so, Sophie Countess of Wessex. Mm -hmm. There's been lots of talk about her because she's... Look, she, well, she's looked actually amazing for a long time. She's incredibly slim now and glowing. Mm -hmm. I, I think she looks quite modelly. But they're saying, you know, is she trying to take over the Duchess of Cambridge's, you know... Spot. Glamour, glamour spot. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I think she's always been actually very beautiful, and now is even more so. And she's um, a patron of London Fashion College, mm. London College of Fashion. Ian's disagreeing. Uh, I can see his face. <laughs> but she's she is actually she's she's Miss Perfect I've, in the I, Royals. I, I, she I, is. I think we're going to see um, open warfare amongst the royal family this year. Because I think oh, they're, they're, that got to do with well, I, I, and, and I think they're all positioning themselves for you know um, what, what's going to sort of happen as well. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I do. Because I, yeah. there, there, there's so many things going on behind the scenes right now. <laughs> I have to he say, Ian, you've been pretty like spot on with things with the wrong. <laughs> I mean, we, we both we have. Know, we know there's lots of contentions, yeah. lots of things happening. Yeah. But Sophie has always sat there very quietly and always looked beautiful. But mm. now she's. Her health regime's really kicked in for the last year. She's amazing. Yeah. And, you, you know, you can't change your look. So she's, why, why should she be trying to take well, her? Well, Edward is, is the one they always reckon is the most image conscious oh. out of the three. Well, and And so the, the, there's, you know, whether the, um, they're trying to uh, up their imagery uh, right now. Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Oh. You know, so I'm so sure she's just shining. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll she's see. We'll shining. See. Okay. <laughs> I think we've got time for one more. Um, 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 so, the loads, of, loads of people are obviously hitting 100, um, and the Queen sends out telegrams. Yes. But you have to apply for them, apparently. Oh. But obviously people, they're, they're living... Yeah, you, I didn't realise that. I, I thought, yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you apply for them. Yeah. But okay. it's gone up by... The number of people reaching 100 has gone up by 17%. So people are living longer, and the, the little, the little people in the Whitehall office, they've had to employ more, more staff to send out all the cards. Oh. They send out these beautiful cards of the Queen. But um, yeah, it's unusual, isn't it, that you have to apply for it? But so I guess. It kind of 
spoils everything, really, if you have to apply for your own card. But it would be family doing it for, yeah. for them. But I'm sure people do it for themselves as well somehow. Yeah, maybe. In my, in my, case, it'll be, in my case, it'll be the home. <laughs> <laughs> the, the home for a retired royal journalist. <laughs> Can you imagine it? Have we got more? Have we got more time? Have we, Have we got more time? time? Don't know, no one's talking to me. No, We've got no. time for one more? Yeah, go on then. So we're all, all no, we're finished. No, we're saying oh, we're finished. Oh, 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 oh. We'll save it Sorry. for next time. Save it for the next show. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you, you again next time. Well, do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be joined with the love experts, James and Helena Marquez, giving us tips on how to refresh our relationships. And I'll also be answering a question from a viewer. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we go over to our love experts, let's take a look at this fitness tip from Jane Rafter on how to strengthen your thighs. Hi everyone. As you can see, I am leaning up against a wall and you might be wondering why I'm in this funny position. I'm actually doing an exercise. So what I'm doing is imagining there's a chair underneath me, but I'm holding myself up with my thighs. So if you fancy giving it a go, you could jump off the sofa right now, go and find a wall and just come down and hold it. And you will really feel it here in your thighs. It really strengthens the thighs up. And you know what's good about it? It doesn't hurt the knees because your bum's resting back on the wall. There's no weight loaded in the knees. You've got the ankles stacked under the knees. And if you do this every day, you'll be surprised. Each, each day you'll be able to hold it a little bit longer. So give it a go, strengthen up those legs, and I'll see you next time. That looks really easy, but trust me, it's not. I think everyone should try it. Okay, so now it's time to say hello to James and Helena Marquez. Hello. hello. Hi, Chrissy. Hi. How are you doing? Good, very well. It's good you. to have you back on. So for those of you that are new to the show, these are our love experts that come on monthly, around monthly, or like quite mm. regularly to the show. Uh, you've been married for 14 years, almost 14 years, and you also do love therapy seminars every yes. Saturday. Every yes. Saturday, I get yes. it. So you can help this viewer then, because we've got a question from you, and you can mm -hmm. help me to answer this question. She says, "Hi, Chris, and she's anonymous. I'm a married woman, but there's this guy at work who's been flirting with me and giving me all sorts of lovely compliments. At first, I would just ignore him, but now I'm starting to like the attention. He knows I'm married, but this doesn't seem to deter him." He's an attractive man, but I would never cheat on my husband. So why am I having these conflicting feelings? Okay, I think I'm going to pass this one over to you guys. I'll, I'll give my opinion in just a moment. So she's a married woman. She, she reckons she'll never cheat on her husband, but she's kind of liking the attention from this guy at work. What, could you, what do you think could be the, the issue there? Well, I think just the fact that she's asking the question already answers, right? If, if you... If you are asking someone what do they think, it's because mm -hmm. you have a doubt about mm -hmm. what you're doing. And if you have a doubt about your, what you're doing, it means you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. I think it's, it's a matter of, of respect for, for your partner because uh, I know she said that, you know, she's tried to uh, set boundaries, but it doesn't deter him, but mm -hmm. maybe she hasn't done it strongly enough. And yeah, she's not stoppy, and yeah, it's not really yeah. like... Mm -hmm. I think, I think you, you need to be very clear about uh -huh. what is right, what is what is wrong, and and and, and give the right signals f so that people don't feel they have, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the freedom to, to say certain things mm -hmm. to you. I think it's it's up to the person to make to put those boundaries. And and certainly, um, if she if that continues, it's not going to end well mm -hmm. for sure. Not at all. And it's interesting she said that she, she says she will never cheat on her husband. Yet she seems to be kind mm -hmm. of harboring these feelings. She's kind of keeping them. They're not doing anything mm -hmm. about I, it. I think she's. Uh, entertaining it a bit, mm -hmm. which is playing with fire. Yeah. And uh, if she's paying attention, so much attention to him and what he's doing, and uh, maybe that's why she wasn't so harsh with him, because you flirt with, with maybe he f started flirting with her for a while, and then first time, second time, she, she should have just mm -hmm. ended there mm -hmm. and there. But maybe she didn't, because maybe she's, there's something going on in her marriage. Yeah. That could be an option. Yeah. Maybe she's not receiving all these compliments from her partner. 
Mm-hmm. Or maybe she is and she just likes to, you yeah. know, let's the see, let's see yeah, the attention yeah. and see what's going to yeah. happen. Which oh, no, is I very, do think, like, yeah, it's probably, I do think it may be likely that, you know, maybe you aren't getting the attention that you mm-hmm. you think you need from your husband. Because sometimes it's, it's a bit of a grey area because sometimes women say, I'm not getting enough attention at home, but they the type of attention they're looking for is the roses and the compliments every five minutes. And it's not like that in a yeah. marriage all the time, is it? Yeah. People have to be realistic about, you know, you get used to each other, you, you show your love in other ways. Yeah, and so. let's be honest. I mean, I can't remember that really the last time I gave roses or chocolates <laughs> to Elena. I shouldn't be saying this, but I do a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's also yeah. important, I think, sometimes a person forgets that although, you know, your partner may not have given you roses for a while or chocolates for a while, but maybe... His, he has integrity, he loves you, yeah. he, he looks exactly. after you, he does his best mm-hmm. to, to appreciate you He's in his own faithful. way. And, and mm-hmm. it's not worth throwing all that away because someone pays you a little bit of attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, in your case, I, I, th- I really think if, if you've been firm with this guy and he's still sort of coming after you, and I, I would, in your, if I were in your position, I would be very harsh, very, very harsh with him. If that doesn't work, I would even... Um, asked to move departments if I had to, or even leave the job, because that's how much I value my marriage. Well, and I don't want, yeah, exactly, reporting for harassment. So, you know, it's some, your marriage is something so precious, a relationship is something so, so precious. And also invest in your own marriage. Start, you know, maybe doing different things with your husband, spending more time together. Invest in your relationship so you don't have these thoughts. And when the thoughts come, think of something else. Think of your husband. Because, you know, people do get tempted sometimes, don't they? Mm-hmm. So it's, but, right, the thoughts come, but you don't have to leave them there. You don't have to be thinking about this guy. Start thinking about your husband instead. All right, Absolutely. well, let's talk about the other, the other stuff. So we're talking about new relationships. We're at the big, kind of the beginning of, the new, of a new year. Mm. And obviously there are couples that have um, had issues in 2014. And they've now moved into a new year. But how, how can they ensure, for example, that this year will be different in their relationship and they're not just going to be repeating the problems of the past? Because mm-hmm. everyone's very hopeful this time of year. Yeah. Well, the, the truth is, look, if the person has had problems in the past, they'll, they'll have problems again. Problems always come up, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think the person should be waiting for the new year or a new calendar month to do something about it. I think the important thing to do in a relationship is if you, if you have dealt with a problem, do not bring it up again. Just don't. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, you, you, you cannot bring anything back that happened in two, 2014 to this year. So uh, the mistake a lot of couples make is that they, they deal with the problem and they say it's sorted. Mm-hmm. But the moment they have an argument, it's like this. Sometimes when everything is fine, if you ask, if, you know, if your wife asks you, what would you like me to change? And then you'll say, no, you're perfect. Everything's fine. I, you know, I, I can't think of a single thing for you to change. <laughs> but the moment you have an argument, you remember everything yeah. in, the, in the split, like in, in the blink of an eye. And it's, it takes a lot of strength to say, we've dealt with this, I'm not going to bring that up. So whether it's because it's 2015 or you just, de- you just decided to start things afresh, do not bring past problems up. Just mm-hmm. don't. Okay. So and also if you want to avoid the old problems, yeah. you have to, to stop doing the old Things yes, I used to do, <laughs> because yeah. honestly, the only thing that separates the old from the, the you know from the old to the new year is a second, one second. Mm-hmm. The clocks turn to midnight, and you're still the same person. You still live with the same person. Mm-hmm. You didn't have That's time true. to change in one second. So that I'm sorry for all the enthusiastics out there that love the <laughs> you know the, the new the year. Thing. <laughs> we're, we're really <laughs> I'm also a very positive person, and I have lots of goals for this year, but. You need to stop doing the wrong things that you were doing so that you can have better results. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. And how about for the singletons? Because obviously there might be people that had a really rough Mm. year last year with relationships and they're like, oh my God, I don't know, I'm scared (laughs) to get into a new relationship or I just don't see myself with anyone. What advice would you give to them now that is a new new year for them? Well, look, you you know, I I think it's very rare to find someone who dates and marries the very first uh, boy from the girlfriend they had. I think Elena was the only person on the plan- on planet Earth. <laughs> I do know an <laughs> And you. But I think it's very rare to find that. So, of yeah. course, you have bad experiences. You have, mm. you know, relationships that go wrong sometimes. And I think the only thing you can do is to look back and say, look, perhaps I should have done things a little bit differently. Maybe I went in too quickly, head first. Maybe this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Mm. But it doesn't mean that you're doomed to failure, right? It just means... You learn and you make sure, like Elena said, you don't make those mistakes again. 
And of course, you, if, when you do start dating someone, there is a screening process. Mm -hmm. But no matter how thorough you are, sometimes things go wrong. But you just mm -hmm. learn and you try to move on. And I think something very important, Chrissy, is for, for relationships, for decisions to be made mm -hmm. with your mind, with your intelligence and not with your feelings. Because sometimes you feel, you know, this person makes me feel great. It's like the, the bad boy syndrome, mm -hmm. right? The girl likes the bad boy, but the bad boy may be good for a week, for a month, but he's not the guy you're gonna marry. He's a bad boy for a reason. Mm -hmm. So if you've had bad experiences, <laughs> try to avoid the mistakes you've made before. And at some point, I'm sure that success will happen. Mm -hmm. And stop doing what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work, move on. How do I know if it doesn't work or it works? Look around you. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to be doing the same things and they're still single. So don't be afraid to be different. Mm -hmm. Don't just give yourself like this. Be different. Let him chase you. Let him earn, earn it. Or let her. Yeah, or let <laughs> her earn it. Yeah, as well. It goes both ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we've almost run out exactly. of time, but just quickly, what's, what's coming up in the, the love therapy meetings this oh, year? So right, things. you know, I think this year we're taking love therapy to a whole different level, right? We, we started a <laughs> seminar now for the whole month of January mm -hmm. uh, on strength, because whatever your relationship status is, you need mm -hmm. to be strong. If you're single, mm -hmm. you need to be strong, you know, to wait for the right person. If you're married, you need to be strong to learn from the other person and mm -hmm. put up with their quirky <laughs> flaws. <laughs> and you know, everybody needs to be strong whatever the relationship status is. Mm, so yes. this whole month we're, we're teaching people how to be strong in their relationships. Brilliant. Okay, looking forward yeah. to it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again next time you're on. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolute Alrighty, so we do have to go to a quick break. But do stay tuned because after the break, we have Randy Glenn and Nina and Joan Littler from Thrive on Five to talk about the success in helping people improve their daily diet. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So now I'm joined with Nina, Joe, and Randy from Thrive on Five. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hello. How are Hi. you? Very good. Very good. Uh, okay, so you're all here to talk about your, your business, Thrive on Five, yeah. uh, and you've brought a few things as well to talk about. So first of all, how did you guys get together and come up with the idea of doing this? Well, we have known each other for quite a long time, mm -hmm. um, 20 years odd, and mm -hmm. we are all at a stage of life where we thought we needed a bit of a new challenge, mm -hmm. kids growing up, that sort of thing. And we all enjoy healthy eating, so we, th we thought that we would do something which was mm -hmm. around healthy food, lifestyle. And you might remember about a year ago, there was a lot in the press about, is it five a day, is it seven a yeah. day, or is yeah. it ten a day? And around that time, we challenged ourselves and we thought, let's have a little tally of how much we're actually getting. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that despite the fact we thought we were quite healthy, we were actually falling way short. You know, if you have muesli for breakfast, sushi for lunch, and jack of potato with something for dinner, mm -hmm. and you might even have a glass of juice or a piece of apple, and you're still only getting three of your five a day. Okay. So we thought there's got to be an easier way to mm -hmm. actually get all of your five in, and that would then leave you feeling that you'd done it, sorted, yeah. for the rest of the day. Okay. And we thought, how about coming up with dishes that have got all five of your five a day in? And uh, this is, in fact, one of those dishes. So this has got all five of your five okay, a day in it. What's that inside? It? This has got, funnily enough, uh, red pepper, uh, onion, spinach, mushroom, and tomato. And that's okay. a boona. That's a vegetable. Yeah. Vegetable yeah. boona, okay. yeah. Alrighty. And you've got a pasty there, because I was, I was saying earlier, now I said, I asked them, is this the unhealthy yeah. stuff? I said, no, it's really healthy. So that's why that's healthy. Yeah. Because um, basically we take our favourite food, the food we like to eat, yeah. um, which like everyone else is a bit of a pie and a pastry now and again. <laughs> um, and then we give, give it sort of a healthy makeover. So okay. with the pasty, we've filled that with veg. So that's got three portions of veg in it. We've rolled the pastry really thin as well. Okay. And we've dry roasted the vegetables in there. Yeah. Um, so it's all together a vegetable thing. So you can still have the pasty experience, but without <laughs> the guilt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really good. And, and what about all these spices and stuff that you have here? 
What's this all about? Um, well, basically, we, we, we do recipes, but we also do spice kits so that if people don't want to go and buy, go the whole hog and buy spices that they might never use again, right. it will sit in the back of the cupboard. Um, we do spice kits with uh, recipe cards oh, so that they right, can experiment okay. with yeah. um, the dishes. Okay. Um, so they've got some more unusual spices in there that you couldn't typically get in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. But then all the recipes we develop, um, we do include, uh, we make sure all the ingredients you can get in the major supermarkets. Um, right, so that okay. it's accessible to everyone so that everyone right. can cook them. So it's actually a website that you, that you run from? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what was that like, setting everything up in the first place? Was that yeah. quite tough I, to do? I took charge of doing that and uh, it, was, it was quite a fun experience to yeah. uh, set it up. and. Uh, we actually run it ourselves mm -hmm. and we've created it from scratch ourselves okay. as well. So. Now, now you must all be busy ladies. Do, yeah. do you have other jobs apart from this as well? No, or, Randy or and I are mothers. Yeah. Okay, and, well that's a job. We've, <laughs> all yeah. Had yeah. Very, job. we've all had very busy careers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we try and balance. This has actually worked for us really well because we can balance, you know, we can achieve things through the new business, but balance mm -hmm. it with our families as well. Okay. Now I know a lot of sort of, women they they kind of think oh you know my life's boring now I've had kids what mm -hmm. else can I do in my life and it's just yeah. nice to see that you can yeah. start anything yeah. at any time exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. You can, yeah. and what's that like for you sort of confidence wise really well, I yeah. think it's been nice to have each other yeah because I think you do lose confidence a little when mm. you once you get out of the workplace and you have children and you're not working regularly you do lose a bit of confidence I think and mm -hmm. that's what I hear from most women who are trying to get back into work that they've just yeah. lost that confidence that confidence and that drive yeah. so I think it's really nice to have each other and we know each other really well so when one of us is sort of flagging a bit or feeling feeling not so positive we're boosted by the other and we've okay. all got a really different skill set yeah. um, mm. So okay. I'm more on the business side. Joe's great with the food. Joe Joe's <laughs> does all our recipes. Yeah. I've got oh, a financial great. background, and um, Randy built the website, and she's got a more PR advertising oh, background. Wow. So between us, we've got a really good range of skills. Mm. Okay, what's it like working together then? Like, do 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 you have like sort of maybe disagreements about stuff, or oh. are you like? Yeah. You know, you just agree on everything and just go for no, it. No, no, no. Like? We, we, we disagree. We disagree. Yeah, Do you? Definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it does. It comes with the territory. Yeah. Especially yeah. sisters. Yes. Yeah. So how do you reach a compromise and stuff working together? Yeah. Just talk it over, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And just. I think mm. again, with the, being three of us, it's easy to sort of. Yeah, and usually two will side two, then two eventually, will side. and then the others overrule. <laughs> so. yeah. 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 I just, I'm just thinking, it must be so much fun just having this to do together and just yeah. sort of go go out for coffee yeah. and talk about the business Absolutely. and stuff. Yeah. Like, you do all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, we just thought we'd give it a try, and we've got nothing to lose. Yeah. So, um, what's the response yeah. been like, like so far? Well, Really it's been absolutely really good. amazing, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's I think because it's a very simple idea, you know, mm -hmm. just getting all your five a day in one dish. Yeah, you know, just get it out of the freezer when you get home from work, or and yeah. and I think that's what's very appealing about it. Mm -hmm. And what about future plans for the business? What are you? What are you hoping well, to do? We've got a book coming out oh, um, in okay. late spring, okay. so that's really exciting. What's it called? Did you have the it's title It's called yet? Thrive on Five, Get Your Five a Day the Easy Way. Okay. And um, Who's writing that one? Is it all well, of we've you? all written <laughs> it. We've <laughs> all written <laughs> it, yeah. 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 So um, that's, that will be exciting yeah. in the next few, um, few months. Okay. So that will go internationally as well as in the oh, UK. Brilliant. So we'll see okay. how that goes. So we've been oh. quite lucky in that regard to have mm. that as soon as we started. Yeah. Um, uh, and it will have almost 100 recipes, over half of which will contain, the dishes will contain all your five a day. Yeah. And then the other half are sort of snacks and top-ups and desserts right, okay. with lots of fruit in them, etc. So, um, yeah. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Ladies, all the best for, for the future. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. And a healthy, healthy new year for, you, yeah. for everyone, actually. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. We've got time for a video before we go for a break. And this one's from Hannah Richards with a healthy recipe. Welcome to the MTS Kitchen. My name's Hannah Richards and today I'm going to show you how to make some really healthy protein balls. For this recipe all you need are some prunes, blackberries, flaked almonds, walnuts and some chopped nuts. Uh, walnuts into a big mixing bowl, flaked almonds and some chopped nuts, uh, your prunes which Again, we'll just make everything stick together. And then your 
beautiful blackberries. I'm going to leave a few of them off to the side. Um, I'll show you in a minute why. So now for the bit to get stuck in, with a clean pair of hands, crush everything together. And you can see that beautiful color of the blackberries coming straight through and staining all those nuts. Beautiful. Once that's all um, mixed up, I'm going to add my two tablespoons of coconut oil and I'm going to mix that through the recipe again. So then just take little bits off into a small bite-sized ball and put them on the plate. The blackberry has really given them a beautiful colour and the last thing that I'm going to do, and, and this is again just personal taste, I'm going to sprinkle them with some um, cinnamon. So I'm just going to tap it around like that. So there you have it, blackberry and cinnamon protein balls. All that you need to do now is put them in the fridge for five to ten minutes, um, then you'll eat them and then you can store them in the fridge again. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. So in just a moment, we're going to be speaking to Dr. Rob Hicks about the checkups that everyone should have. But first of all, let's take a look at this challenge. Hi everyone, I'm ready for my next adventure and I'm here with John from Tea Wife Adventures. Hi John. Hi there, how are you doing? I'm very well. What are we doing today then? Today we're going rock climbing, well abseiling and then rock climbing. So uh, we're going to take a little stroll along the coast mm -hmm. and then learn to trust one of these and, okay. and unfortunately trust me as well. So. Okay. Bit, bit of that. Are you trustworthy? That's the question. Definitely am, without oh, a doubt. You've done this loads of times, so I'm yeah, in safe about, hands, right? Yeah, about 15 years worth. Oh, so. right, okay, that's fine. All right, while. so let's go and see how I do, and hopefully I'll pass this challenge. What do you reckon? I reckon you will. Yeah, all right then. Let's go. I feel yeah. nice and secure, then. Oh, well, I feel tight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we're about to start the challenge, John, almost ready. That's what's right, what's yeah. going to happen now? Well, if you look behind you, you can see the rock face that we're going to abseil down, and then you're going to climb back up. Okay. Okay. So it's a beautiful spot here. This is called Porth of Funham, um, in St Brides Bay, a really beautiful spot. We're going to be using um, an abseil device. This is called a figure of eight. Right. Okay, and it basically works on friction. These few bends the rope takes through the device adds plenty of friction. You'll be able to hold on with like literally fingertips and that'll keep you uh, moving slowly down the rope. Okay, so we're just gonna tie you into the safety line. Right through there. This is a beautiful knot, it's called a re-threaded figure of eight. So what you can see I'm doing is I've got the one figure of eight knot on there already, and I'm just re-threading it back on top of itself. Keep going all the way. Keep coming straight towards me. So the last little bit here, the footholds get a little bit smaller, but you've got these nice little sort of toe-sized ledges just there. That's it. But good handholds. Keep pulling in. That's it. You got it. Keep going nice and easy. Keep coming over towards me a little bit if you can. Fantastic, really good. That's it. Alright. Get 
Yeah, I'm standing on that nice big ledge just there. <laughs> hey. Hey. Well done, that was awesome. Thank you. Fantastic effort. I did it! I wasn't actually expecting to climb back up. I, I didn't know that was part of the challenge. Well, we thought we'd keep well, that we as a little of, surprise. You, you mentioned it kind of, I didn't really register. Yeah, just thinking oh. about getting down. I'm actually really proud of myself for doing that. You've done really, really well. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Really, really good. I mean, to, to do that without having had much practice is yeah. fantastic. Really, really good. Oh, brilliant. Nice Thank time. you. I did it. Woo! That's fun. <laughs> Alrighty, so now it's time to speak to Dr. Rob Hicks. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. If you hear my, my, my tummy rumbling, it's because I've got my eye on that pasty. That, I know, uh, where is it? Oh, it's always cut up already, ready for you to have it's a ready. piece. Look at that. Lovely. <laughs> it looks lovely, Look, doesn't it? As long as it's still there. But an idea, wasn't it, for, for the ladies to come idea. up with? Yeah. Yeah. Take, take food that people like, yeah. pasties, for example, if I <laughs> hold my hand up, um, and make them healthier yeah. by putting in your portions of, 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 of That's vegetables. Idea. Yeah. So if they can come up with a donut, <laughs> I'll be delighted. <laughs> All right, let's move swiftly on now, away from the donuts. Okay, so we're talking about health checks now. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, we'll be at the start of a new year, people supposedly making resolutions about taking care of their health, maybe visiting their GP because for things that maybe they haven't bothered to go for. Uh, let's start off with the men. Mm. What's yeah. the most... Uh, common thing for, for men ailments that maybe they don't get checked up for? I, th I think um, it, it's less so now than it was years ago, but for men, it's any ailment, isn't it? You know, they, <laughs> that they ignore and they don't get checked up for. But primarily, yeah. it's, the, it's the embarrassing areas for them. It's it, for men, it's, it's below the navel and above the knee. So anything mm -hmm. that's not working in that area, so it might be that they're having to go to the toilet a lot at night, for example, which mm -hmm. nine times out of ten is because their, their prostate gland is enlarged and it's affecting the flow of urine. Okay. Um, or it might be because of erection problems. So that, that's what the, the, the guys tend to ignore. Mm -hmm. um, but what's important is, is whether you're a man or a woman, there, there are conditions that can be going on in the body without you knowing it about it, causing damage. So high blood pressure for example, mm -hmm. can be damaging the heart and circulation, you know, increasing a person's risk of a heart attack or a stroke. Diabetes, I know we've talked about that before on the programme. Yeah. You know, it, the diabetes may be present, but not causing symptoms yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the damage is being caused by the diabetes, but the person doesn't know. So these are the sort of things you can get checked for, blood pressure, blood sugar, and blood cholesterol as well. It's very, you know, something that at this time of the year, particularly after the festive season, lots of fatty mm -hmm. foods people have, have, have enjoyed and indulged in, then, you know, yes. having, a, having, you know, um, yes. again, I'm going to put my hand up. There Me we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's a good idea to think about getting those checked because cholesterol narrows the arteries, stops the blood getting through to the re relevant organs, so the mm. heart, for example, the brain, and increases the risk again of heart attacks and strokes. Okay. Now, what are the, because obviously people need to know what kind of checks they need to actually ask for. What are the, the most important ones, the most common ones that you should go and ask. Them. Yeah, if you've not had if you've not had your blood pressure checked or your blood sugar checked or your cholesterol checked within the last let's say you know three or four years, then those those are the ones to ask for. You can just turn up and ask for that. Yeah, you can just turn up okay. and, and actually a lot of pharmacies now are, are providing that service as well. So you don't necessarily okay. have to go to your to your GP. Mm -hmm. And these are tests that your your practice nurse at the practice will do as well. There's, there's something that we can all do at home and that's jump on the scales <laughs> yeah. or, and take a tape measure and put it around our middle okay. because you know you know um, obesity and, and gathering of fat around the middle is the major mm -hmm. risk factor for you know heart disease, um, strokes, diabetes, um, damage to the liver. So those are things that you can assess by looking in the mirror okay. and, and doing yourself at yeah. home and then the GP can do the, the, the blood pressure and the other blood mm. tests. Now as well, people take like ages, for example, because they don't see anything wrong, like you were saying. Also like with getting their eyes checked, yeah. um, their, you mentioned the ears before yeah, as well. I, mean, I found that was quite interesting. People forget about the important you know, organs like the eyes and, and, and the ears, and indeed teeth. You know, mm. People often forget about teeth. So eyes, in general, you, you'd be advised to have your eyes tested around every two years, unless you fall into a particular group. So, for example, if you've got diabetes or if you're a child who wears glasses, mm -hmm. um, then you'll be advised to have your eyes tested perhaps more frequently. Um, teeth, if you're over 18, the recommendation is to have your teeth checked by a dentist at least every two years. Or more frequently, again, if mm. you've got gum disease and the dentist says, look, I need to see you in six months or a year's time. Okay. If you're under 18, then you should have your teeth examined at least every year. Okay. Again, unless you're advised to have it more frequently. And the ears you mentioned... Yeah, that, that's all yeah. I didn't really know about because I didn't think you needed to 
have any checks for your no, ears. This is like we, we need to leave our ears alone. Right, the okay. The, the, so the, stop shoving. The yes, <laughs> exactly. The, the, How do you clean them? The ears have, a, have an inbuilt self mechanism for cleaning. And when people try and clean the ears with cotton buds, they upset that process, they really? damage that process, and the wax, which is what you know the ears make to clean themselves, and that falls out during the day without us noticing, you stick a cotton bud in the ear, you're just going to shove it further back into the ear, oh and you're going to compact it. And that's not only you know, going to be uncomfortable, it's going to reduce your hearing, but also you risk damaging the in, inside of the ear as well. So but, hearing but what tests... What about when it feels sticky and stuff? Yeah, and you, you, wanna, like, you know, put that nail away. You know, it's, um, the, the best thing you can do if you, if you do need to, to, to try and clear them is some warm olive oil. And you don't warm it in a pan oh, or the microwave. Oh, my granny used to do that, yeah. but it was only when we had earache. She used to shove it like a bit of cotton down the hole. It used to be like hot, hot olive oil. Not hot. It needs to, <laughs> hot. Be, it needs to be, you know, cool yeah. so that you, you know, it's not going to burn yeah. and cause damage. And the way to do it is put a teaspoon under a hot tap to warm the spoon. Okay. Put the olive oil right. onto the warmed spoon, then you'll get the heat, a, a, a little bit of warming. Mm -hmm. And then just get somebody to, to use a... <coughs> uh, a dropper or off the spoon to, to, to dribble it into the ears. And, and that, that cleans will, it? That will just soften any wax, that will just soothe any uh, irritation naturally without you then physically going and, you know, hammering the inside of the ear. Of course, you've got to throw away the cotton buds then. Oh, you can use them for other things. Oh yeah, make up. Yeah, yeah but, but they, you know, we always say, nothing smaller than your elbow should go into your right. ear. Right, <laughs> okay. So that, that's, oh. that's the rule of thumb. Okay, that's really interesting. And I'm of sure course, if you've got if you've got you know symptoms, pain, or you can't, you're not hearing so well, yeah. then obviously go and get your ears checked. Right. How often should you do the treatment for your ears? Then? Oh, that, that, there's off. there's no rule on that. I mean, if all you right. want, if you want to do it once a week, you can do it once a week. Just wait for it but, to drop out. But you don't have to do it at all. <laughs> oh gosh, that's really interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. the ears are a remarkable piece of kit, and invariably when they go wrong, it's because we've done something. Either we've okay. shoved cotton buds or fingers or pens in them, yeah. or people have exposed the ears to, to loud noise. Oh. And nowadays, okay. with people with headphones, uh, yeah. you're playing the music far too loud. I've seen increasingly a number of people who have got noise-induced hearing loss, which often is, is, is not reversible. Wow, OK, that's serious. OK, so, yeah. Rob, that was great having you on again. Really interesting. Can I have my pasty now? You can have your pasty. <laughs> oh, I think there's a piece missing. What's going on? <laughs> Someone's been eating it. <laughs> Oh, we've reached the end of the show as well, I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up the show now so we can eat some pasty. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And guys, if you want any information about our guests today, you can visit the website chriscbshow.tv. All the websites are there. And also, if you'd like to email me, you can do so on chris at chriscbshow.tv. Bye for now.